Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to put together the adorable bird wind chime. It's made of metal and glass. When you get your kit, it's going to already have the top part and the bird attached. And the rest of your kit looks like this. You'll have the, ch the glass chimes, you'll have four balls, you'll have two bells, you'll have beads, and you'll have some other beads. You will need a ruler, and a pair of scissors. You'll also have um, the monofilament, which is fishing line in your kit. And I always, always, always cut way more fishing line than I need because it's hard to tie a knot if you only have a little bit. And the monofilament is slippery, so I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks that I use that make sure that my wind chime hangs evenly. We're going to start building our wind chime from the bottom up and we're going to make each part before we attach it to the top. So I've cut about 16, 18 inches of the monofilament. I'm going to put the bell on first. I'm going to even up my monofilament and then I'm going to tie an overhand knot at the very top of this ball. And I want this knot snugged right up to the ball. I don't know if you can see that here. It's not quite snugged up, so I'm going to pull it. And this is what I mean by the monofilament gets slippery. I can tighten that knot so it sits right on top of this metal part. The reason I'm doing that is because no matter how much I think I have this closed, it might slip out. And I don't want it to. I want it to stay right there at the top. So I'm going to put that on. And then I'm going to measure about two inches up. I'm going to tie another slip knot, just like that. The reason for this slip knot right here is it's going to make it easier for me to attach my chime. So I'm going to put one end through the chime, and you can tell it this chime it can't go down any further. So I'm going to tie three knots at the top of this glass chime, and I want it to stay on top of the chime. Can. It's one, two, three, and I'm going to pull this third knot really tight. Okay, then I'm going to snip the ends off, and I'm ready for my next piece. I'm going to take another 15 to 18 inches of the monofilament. I'm going to put it through this chime because now I'm making the center part. And this is where I'm going to put what I call a stop bead on and I want to show you how to do this. I'm going to take the blue one I think. I'm going to put both ends of my monofilament through the bead and then I'm going to go back up through this bead in the same direction that I already did. When I do that, it's going to create a bead that floats. See how that is? And so I'm then going to tie, and I, and I can still move this bead around a little bit. If you want to, you can add a little dab of glue. Once your wind chime is completely done, bear in mind that it's handcrafted, it's organic, and it should look that way. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot about two inches up. That knot will enable me to put my next chime on. You can see my knot here about two inches, a little more. It'll enable me to put my next chime on without, and I'll be able to tie a really tight knot. So again, I'm gonna put three knots at the top of this chime. Maybe. Two. And three. There we go, and I'm pulling that third night knot tight. Again, if you want to put a little dab of glue on all your knots, you're welcome to do that. So now I have two chimes on. I'm going to put my another piece of monofilament on. Again, 12 to 14 inches. I'm going to tie it through the chime. I'm getting the ends even. 
I'm gonna take a yellow ball this time and I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna create a floating bead. I'm going back through the same way. If I go down through this bead, it'll just come off. I'm gonna go back through the same way. And that bead now floats. This time I wanna go up about three inches from the top of the chime. I'm gonna tie a knot. And then this piece will be ready to be tied to the top of my wind chime. I'm gonna complete all four of these pieces as well as the center string. Now that I have my first chime complete, I'm gonna complete the other three before I attach them onto here. And you heard me say that um, I'm measuring two inches, two inches, and three inches when I do my knots and attach them. Having said that, I'm going to measure the other chimes that I do against this chime because I find that get, that gives me a more accurate um, similarity between the chimes. So again, I'm taking my 12 to 15 inches of monofilament, I'm finding the center, I'm going to make an overhand knot at the very top of that loop in the bar. And sometimes, again, this is slippery. Sometimes knots don't always land where you want them to be. You can see how far up this knot is. So I'm gonna separate it and pull it. And that also shows you just how slippery the monofilament can be. Now that knot is right up where I want it to be. So what I mean when I say measure against this one, I'm going to take my knot here and this is this is where the other chime is, so I'm going to tie my knot here. And I'm going to assume it's close to two inches, but what I do know is it will be the same as this one. I'm going to make my other four charms and then I'll show you how to do the center. Now that I've gotten all four of my chimes made separately, I'm gonna work on the center strand. <clears throat> For that, you need a lot of monofilament. I took five feet of monofilament. Three, four, five. This all comes in your kit as well. Again, I'm gonna loop it through my bell and then I'm gonna find the center. And I'm going to attach this bell exactly the same way that I attached these balls with an overhand knot. It might be hard to see that, so we'll zoom in a little bit. Get the knot down as far as you can and then pull the strands separately and really tighten that knot up. Okay, so that knot is good and set there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put beads on. And you have plenty of beads in your kit. Um, you don't have to bead it. I like it that way. If you want to put beads here, you can do that as well. Get your uh, knot on. You can bead in between here. I think for me that was a little busy, so I'm just gonna bead the center strand. And I'm just putting both strands through the beads. Just like that. And then I'll show you how to attach the center bell. And they're gonna go all the way down. So I'm gonna bead up to um, 14 inches. And I'll show you that next. So I've beaded approximately 14 or 15 inches. I think this one is 15 inches of beads. The reason that I had you cut five feet of monofilament is because it's all one strand from this bell through this bell. This could be the tricky part. This is where you need patience um, and some glasses. I don't know if you can see inside that bell, I'm gonna get the two strands of monofilament to go up through that hole so it'll come out the top. And I've had better luck doing it one strand at a time. There we go, there's one. The good thing, this is about 12 pound monofilament and it is stiff enough to be able to do things like this, but also light enough that it flows. So I'm gonna pull both strands through 
and then I'm going to start beading again and I'm going to bead up about six inches. So I have beaded about six inches on the top of this bell. Let me get that up here. I'm going to put an overhand knot here and you will see the reasoning behind all these overhand knots when I go to put this on the top. Okay, that's my overhand knot. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach all of my chimes. Let me set my ruler aside. I'm going to attach all of my chimes to the top part. I'm going to start with the center chime. The reasoning behind this knot is so that I can effectively tie this on here without it cinching up. So that since I've been so careful to measure where my chimes are going, they should in theory all be about the same length. So I'm going to tie. See, I can pull this really tightly without fear of this all cinching up. So that's one knot, two, three. I'm going to put one more just because. And then I'm going to pull it very tightly. Okay, I'm going to snip that off, the excess. And then I can go ahead and tie into these four pieces my chimes. Again, I have my slip knot right here, my overhand knot there. I'm going to put it on. And you will see that once I do that, I can't pull any further, so I can't um, over tighten it. So one, two, three. And that third knot is really tight. Let's snip it. Again, a little spot of glue isn't a bad idea. Okay, I'm gonna take this one to the next slot. That knot keeps it from me being able to pull it too tight. One, two. I'll do the other two and show you the finished product. So here's the finished wind chime. I love it, this little bluebird of happiness. And I wanted to show you why it was important to put the top knots there and also to measure because this center bell is sort of the clacker. That's what's going to make the noise. Um, and that's why you want to have that in the center of your chimes. But I think it's super cool. You don't have to have the beads on it. I like it. I think it adds a little pizzazz. What do you think? See you next time.